So basically what we're saying is the sum of i to the r from i equal 1 to n is equal to, well first let's look, this is sum of i to the 0. 0 is r in this case, but we have 1 down here in this fraction. So 1 over r plus 1 is multiplied by all of the terms in every single row. And each row, of course, is used to compute a single sum power. So therefore, what I'm going to do is just write 1 over r plus 1. And I'm going to say times. With the exception of the sum of i to the 0 power, all other ones have n squared plus n or n cubed plus n squared and so forth. So in general, for any row where r is greater than 0, well, for example, here we have sum of i to the first power. r is 1 in this case. So we have n to the 1, so n to the r, but we also have n to the r plus 1. So we say n to the r plus 1 plus n to the r. From that point, we have a summation here of summations. So we're going to have a double sum. And this is an alternating sign double sum. So how we're going to express this is we're going to say a sum. We know it's a sum. But first we're going to do is express these numbers as binomial coefficients. So we have binomial. Well, what is it going to be? The top number in the binomial expression is the row number of Pascal's triangle in which that coefficient or number is in. This is, for example, is row 0. This is row 1, row 2, row 3, and so forth. So for example, when we have this, n squared plus n, well, this one's a little bit tricky. So how about let's just focus on the i squared example. We have it in row 0, 1, 2. We have it in row 2. And that is the same as the value of r here, which is 2. So the top of the binomial expression is going to be r. The bottom location of the binomial expression is to tell you what column it's in. For example, down here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. So therefore, looking at the i squared example, we have column 0, 1, 2. And the next one, i cubed, 0, 1, 2. Next one, 0, 1, 2. So it has to start at 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, it starts at a value, and it goes to something else. So therefore, we're not going to put a specific number here. We're going to put a value. Let's call it k. And we're going to say k starts at 2. And it goes to something, some value. But what value is that? It's the last column in the row. For example, this sum is the last sum in this row, because it's the only sum. This one is the last sum, and so forth. So how do we determine that? Well, let's look here. This is i to the 0 power. And this is column 0, the last column in the row. In this row, the last column is 1, which corresponds to that one. Then the second row of the Pascal's triangle, not this, you know, because it starts with 0, 1, 2. In the second row of the Pascal's triangle, the last column number is 0, 1, 2, which also corresponds with the power here. Therefore, the last column number in every single row corresponds to the power of r in which the sum of all terms and as well as the product of this fraction is equal to that summation. So in other words, we put r there. It's from 2 to r. For example, in the second to bottom row of the section of the Pascal triangle that we have drawn, the range of the summations that we choose to express in this formula start at 2, so column number 2. So this is the first summation that we add. But it goes to r. In this case, r is 5. So 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's 2 to 5. And the binomial coefficient is, well, it's telling us that we're in row 5. So 5 comes to here as well. So we're in row 5. And it tells us the column numbers, which we, again, just scene, start at 2, and go to r. So this is how we express the coefficients just in this part of the Pascal's triangle that we have used. Next is that we have to identify which ones are positive and which ones are negative. It's quite simple. Every other column is negative. 
but the first one is not. So the second column in every single row is positive. The third column, fifth column, seventh column, and odd columns are negative. Since we start with 2 as our variable inside of the summation, we can express this as minus 1 to the k power. Because when negative 1 is raised to an even number, then it's positive. So it, for an even column, this negative 1 won't have any effect on the value of the coefficients. But when the column number is odd, this k will be an odd number and minus 1 to an odd power is negative. So basically now we have expressed this fractional factor as 1 over r plus 1. Except for this zero row, from the first row all the way down to whatever number of rows you want to go to, we have expressed a sum of two powers of n as this. We have also now successfully modeled the binomial coefficients and their signs in front of every one of these summations. Therefore, the last thing we have to do is the summations. So within this summation, we add another summation. That summation is going to be the sum from i equal 1 to n, because every single one of these summations is the sum of i equal 1 to n. And it's going to be of i. And so therefore, the last thing we have to model is what is the power that this i is raised to? every one of these summations i. In the second row of the Pascal's triangle, we have i to the 1 only. But in the second, we have i2, then i1. For every single column, it decreases by 1. And recall that we have to use k in here somewhere, or negative k, or something to do with k, because k is the variable of the outer summation. Otherwise, we could take this summation and move it on the outside of this summation. So we know that k has to be involved. k is increasing in the outer summation, but here k is decreasing. So we have to say minus k. But what minus k? We know that the greatest power of i in any given row is r. And it decreases by k every time. But k starts at 2. And we can't decrease, for example, here, um, in this row where we have more than 1, or let's say, let's just go down here to 4. We have r equal 4 in the first iteration of the summation here. But when we apply this k to it, we have r minus 2. r minus 2, well r in this case is 5. So the first summation power that would appear in this single summation would be 5 minus 2. In this case, if we would leave this r minus k, it would be 5 minus 2, which is 3. But our first power of i in the summation is i to the fourth power. So what we're going to have to do, let's just see, if we add 1 to that, would that work? As an exercise, let's say that we have r minus k plus 1 as our expression. And we have k start, okay, we know that r is 6, so we're going to replace r with 6. We know that k starts at 2, so we're going to first have 6 minus 2 plus 1. Then we're going to have 6 minus 3 plus 1, and it goes on and on and on. k goes until r. r in this row, of course, is 6, so we're going to have 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 4, 5, and 6. Evaluating each one of these, we have 6 minus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Then obviously the next one is going to be 6 minus 3 plus 1 is 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1. And that corresponds to the powers of these summations. So actually this is all we need. And therefore, this is the correct closed formula to represent this Pascal's triangle, which we adjusted to find the power sum formulas in general. Now that we have represented our image, or adjusted Pascal's triangle, in an abstract form, we can prove that this algorithm is correct. And I'm going to do so algebraically. I have already written a direct algebraic proof of this.